Good morning. My name is Jennifer Gunji Balzrud and I am the director of Japan House. For the past 40 years, we have shared many facets of Japanese arts and culture with our community and the campus for our spring and fall open houses. However, due to COVID, we did not have an open house this past fall, but we were determined to have one this spring, albeit virtually. Though we aren't quite ready to open our doors to the public, we are preparing to do so in the near future. We have deeply, deeply missed all of our supporters, friends, visitors, students, and guests participating in our events and activities. We truly are longing for the day when everyone feels safe and comfortable to share a bowl of tea in person. Today, I would like to celebrate all of the University of Illinois moms as it's Moms Day weekend on campus. We thank all of the mothers for their support of their students here at the University of Illinois, and we hope that next year you will be able to join us and visit Japan House together. Today, we will be introducing the extraordinary woodworking craftsmanship of Mr. Kerry Marshall. Mr. Marshall has been a longtime student and friend of Professor Emeritus Shozo Sato. He recently constructed some exquisite boxes for Census Tea Collection. Each box has been carefully handcrafted using California redwood. Mr. Marshall will explain the millwork process and then share with us his most current projects with us. His sensitivity to this craft and his artistry is truly awe-inspiring. So we hope that you will join us at 1 p.m. for this very, very special presentation. I thank all of you so very much for your support, interest, and friendship to Japan House. We are so grateful to you and hope that you will continue to find value in what we do and share with our pillars of harmony, respect, purity and tranquility, we believe that it is critical for everyone to embrace these principles in our daily lives, not only to enrich ourselves, but also to be more contributory to the betterment of the world in which we live. I believe we long for society in which we all respect one another and help lift up our community as we unite in our shared humanity. I thank you so very much and I look forward to seeing you in person someday soon. Please continue to take care. Thank you. I have lived and worked in Northern California my entire life. And looking back on it, I recognize that the San Francisco Bay Area and, and Northern California have been influenced by both China and Japan aesthetically and design-wise for a long time. It's not uncommon to find both Japanese or Chinese furniture next to traditional American or European furniture. I actually grew up in a house like that. I went to college and art school during the 19, early 1960s, a, a very interesting period of time to be active within the Bay Area. I graduated as an art major and went on to teach art and work as a curator of contemporary art at a couple of galleries within the Bay Area. In the 80s, my wife and I uh, were active in a program that has started up, which I think would be called now a uh, farm to table project, where a group of us started a small farm and built a restaurant and ran it for the next 10, 20 years. In the 90s, my wife and I and my son moved up to the north coast of Mendocino. About the same time that Shozo moved here, uh, Christina and I, along with my son, re helped rebuild our house. And, and it was at that time that we were introduced to what was called uh, old growth sinker redwood, mainly old growth redwood logs that were reclaimed from the rivers uh, around Mendocino. It's an interesting story in the sense that these 
logs have been sitting in the river for over a hundred years were reclaimed and brought to the coast um, by enterprising fellows in using boats during the high tides. I would then go down to the riverbank and select out a log or two and say, I'll take one of those and a logging truck would then deliver that up to our property. After that, the logs would be uh, milled on a portable sawmill that would come out to our property. And we would then take each of the planks from the milling and store them on, so that they could air dry over some years. Usually about four to five, six years of air drying. So the wood that I have used for Shozo's boxes and now that I'm working for some small tonsus are all made from that sinker redwood. Remarkable wood that has sat in the river and also been infused with salts from the ocean, creating a striation of color in the wood that is truly unique. I think it most likely was in the late 90s that um, I met Shozo for the first time. He was offering a series of callig Japanese calligraphy classes for a group of us woodworkers. It was a perfect combination of um, the detailed work that we had learned at the school that we had been studying at, which is called the Krenov School of Fine Woodworking. And I remember one particular time was when I was working on a, a set of what are called tea tables, small portable tables. And I remember coming out to Shozo and asking, showing him what I was doing and saying, I'd like to put a clear glass uh, calligraphy on this tabletop. Do you have any suggestion? And he said, yes, definitely, definitely. Let's do the uh, kanji of, of uh, flower or hana, and which I had never done before. And I was sort of on a deadline. But it was, again, one of those times when you just sort of have to focus yourself and do it and it was able to sort of trace it out and sandblast it into the glass. And I think it turned out really quite nicely. All right, well, thank you both for joining us today. So we have um, Carrie Marshall from KM Woodworking out in Mendocino, California, joining us. Thank you, Carrie, for joining us today. Thank and you, we have a professor emeritus and the founder of the original Japan house here on the campus at the University of Illinois, uh, Shozo Sato. Hi, Sensei, how are you doing? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Thank you so much for both joining us. We are um, very happy to have you both as part of our open house presentation uh, today, which uh, focuses on um, something that Carrie's been working on, which is these uh, woodworking of some uh, California sinkers, and he's told us about that. And then uh, your involvement, Shozo, in getting him to make some beautiful um, organizational boxes for your um, equipment that you have. So we'd like to just ask you a couple questions. The first thing we want to talk about is your, your friendship. Can you guys talk about that a little bit and, and how you met or some of the experiences that you've had over the past 20-some uh, years? Okay, then let me start. So I retired from Champagne in 92, and then immediately moved to Fort Black, and then waiting for construction completed for the main part of the house. And then we started studio construction. And then after the studio construction is over, I created the so Center for Japanese Art in Northern California to conduct and inform many different traditional arts of Japan in the West Coast. And then since that time, I forgot exactly what year it was, but uh, Kerry and then a few other local people start joining us for choreography class. And then some other people have started tea ceremony class. 
and some people have a smear class, you know, those activities start taking place. And since then, Kerry is, his writing style is almost Chinese scholar, beautiful writing in a very traditional method. And so I be paying great respect for his uh, intuition to visual art. That's how we started. Yeah, it was uh, quite a wonderful connection between a group of uh, primarily woodworkers uh, who came and uh, were introduced to the brush and, and in a way, a, a whole new dexterous kind of experience of how to learn how to dance with the brush. And Shozo, with an incredible amount of patience, sort of led us on and we would meet once a week on a regular basis for some years. I, I think it went, I think we started in the early 2000. And um, no, it was a, a pivotal time, uh, not just for myself, but for many of us here on the coast. We're a small community up here. So the word gets out that something's <laughs> happening up the coast. And um, about the same time, the shows on ice were, uh, meeting each other and, and he was teaching me uh, calligraphy. I was also studying at a fine woodworking school in Fort Bragg. So there were these small groups of pockets of energy that was happening. And uh, so the word gets out. Yes, the Fort Bragg, Mendocino, almost like a twin cities in a sense. Mendocino is more artistic oriented. And the fourth block is because they had uh, Georgian Pacific uh, Lumber Company. So a lot of the industri industrial lumber uh, activities. And then furthermore, at, there is a college, uh, Mendocino, is that a state college? It's a, a junior college, yes. Yeah, junior college. And then they start having the wonderful uh, woodwork classes. And then of course, the Kerry can explain that more than I can. But uh, the area, because they have fantastic materials with the redwoods and then burl from the redwoods and other wood, something you never see in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Totally unique uh, to my mind. And so I was very excited. And then I paid visit to the, uh, the college's wood workshop because one uh, student was from Japan and then we still communicate. And then he studying based on the Japanese way of woodcraft and then combining with Western concept of woodcraft. And then he started making beautiful things. And from that, <clears throat> I went to college and then I even met Kuranov, the professor. And then we talked about tea ceremony, et cetera, et cetera. So Kerry, would you explain about Kuranov? Well, it's a very unique situation that occurred in the early eighties where Jim Kuranov, who had been, a, um, been lecturing throughout the United States about fine woodworking uh, was encouraged to come up the coast and start a school from scratch. And uh, the local junior college said, welcome, we'll, we'll figure out a way to do this. It's an old school concept of uh, guild school, you know, six days a week, eight, to, eight in the morning till six in the evening, just nonstop, well-focused work. Mm -hmm. And of a level that Many of us who were woodworkers, we thought at the time before we showed up at a level of detail and focus that is quite remarkable. And that school is continuing to this day. Um, even through the pandemic, uh, there has been a scaled back version of it. And um, it's a remarkable school, it really is.
Well, I th I think wood. Um, it, there's a graphics to wood, and I think uh, each is is the same. In the Midwest, you have a different graphic because you have different trees, and because we have these um, ancient old growth redwood trees, or some left. Um, I've been sort of uh, gravitated toward them. And it's an interesting point because the, the use of that wood in reference to tansus and Japanese joinery goes a long ways back because when I first moved here, um, Japanese were buying old redwood logs and bringing them back to Japan and sinking them in the harbor to collect it for a longer use. Mm. Ironically, it was about some years later that a group of us connected with some people who were pulling these old logs out of the river. And that's where this concept of the sinker redwood using sinker is submerged uh, in the river. Um, but yeah, wood is a, is a wonderful medium. Um, so it, it, it's, it was something that I just was very lucky to be introduced to and, and work with. To me, it's a unique uh, in that background of the Redwood is, as you know, in the Midwest, you don't have that, of course. There's many different type of wood, but when it comes to construction or make this or that, they just go to lumber or they find and then just create. But in Fort Bragg, because of this uniqueness of the sunken redwood for hundreds of years, and that's so unique. So when you bring up and then see the beauty of it, not just make it anything, but how can you make it this beauty of natural materials come out forward and then that's is that uh, to me is so unique and yet so wonderful that Kerry have brought up that. And when you see this box, everybody says, ah, how beautiful. They want to touch it, rub it. And then start seeing every corner was very detailed jointly in his own style. And mm -hmm. all that is to me is unique. So I have this wall hanging behind. It's say way of art is way of Buddha. In this case, Buddha is not religious Buddha. Buddha means nature. So how can nature be part of art to promote beauty of effect of artistic activities? And that's, I thought this is perfect for Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful statement, Sensei. Is that one of your uh, statements? Yes. It's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. They do have a fine woodworker in a group. So they have, I believe that was an annual exhibition in mm -hmm. Mendocino. Mm -hmm. And then I was invited because many of the members of the exhibited people are from my studio. So obviously I like to see who makes what type. And then Kerry makes beautiful uh, tables. I, I saw so many unique way of making. I still remember he made beautiful wooden uh, table and then in center is a piece of glass, thick glass. And then he had a calligraphy done from my classes and he sandblasted. And so you can see the calligraphy as in a centerpiece of a table. Then I thought, wow, this is wonderful. I never seen it that even in Japan. That has a good story to it also because I was running up on a bit of a deadline to try to get the, these tea tables done. And I came and I show Shoujo, I'm making this. Do you, I ha, do you have an idea of what kind of calligraphy could go to this? <laughs> and he presented the flower. And I'd never tried that. So I struggled to, to 
come up with a way to do that brushing and then, you know, sandblasting that onto that. So the, the most recent project that you guys are working on has been um, kind of in the works now for a couple of years. I remember Shozo talking about this quite some time ago. And in fact, when he said he was having some guy in California make some boxes, I thought, well, can't we find somebody locally to make you some boxes? <laughs> and um, I certainly did not understand um, the wood and I didn't understand the the passion and the friendship that y'all have uh, going on. And I think it goes beyond these, these boxes. Uh, up to uh, recent years, my collection of tea ceremony equipment was in one section. All in the this is the shelf for the tea board, this is shelf for water jar, this is for this and that. <clears throat> but they're all individually just laid out. But knowing in within the next two, three years, this Japan house will have the extension building, and in the basement, they are creating big storage space for tea equipment and other teaching materials. Newcomers, young students, start dealing with this precious uh, art and craft. I was still developing concern. We have to have a nice container to protect these pieces, and then they should be in one place, so, such as incense holder, that they are very small ceramics or wood or metal, whatever. And they're very small pieces, and then you can just have that all over, laid around, and then eventually broken. So have to be wrapped up and put it in individual sections. So I asked him to make me in this way. I sent him a rough drawing, and then this is for the small pieces, for the large pieces such as uh, t-ball boxes. And some of them are very finely made traditional way, some of them just paper box. And so to hold this uh, tea ball, for example, in a category, this is this formal type of tea ball category. Mm -hmm. This is semi formal type of or, or casual wabi sabi type of tea ball. So this way we can divide it up in the container. So we have a sign. So it, that in mind, Kerry have already <laughs> carved in the numbers, number one, <laughs> number two, number three, up to six. Mm -hmm. uh, that was amazing. So mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing as well as that was a big help. So this way we can move from my basement to the new Japan house basement easily and then store there in proper order for future generation purpose. So I came up with the idea of asking Kerry to make me in this type of table, or I mean boxes. And because this box will contain very fine artistic object. So he will come up equal to the level of artistic, beautiful boxes. Much better than the um, plastic bins that we uh, sometimes <laughs> use to house some of our more precious uh, objects. I would say both, um, yeah. but um, I mean, initially it was just, oh my goodness, yes. Um, yeah. I didn't know what I was saying yes to in reference <laughs> to sort of conceptual but that was that was been the fun part of this year is just sort of the two of us saying what do you think about this what do you think about that and one there's two pieces to this for me um as i mentioned i've been involved with this old growth redwood and each log is sort of like an oyster it um each one you open up has different color different pattern different grains and I had sort of sequestered, squirreled away some of this remarkable um, striated colored wood as knowing I'm going to do something special with this. But I never 
came up. And so it had been sitting in my shop for some years. And when Shozo called me, I said, ah, that has to be it. Because there were actually two sets of logs that had a totally unique sort of pattern to them. And one's for the sides and one's for the lids. And um, so on that level, it was just a perfect melding of, of this um, treasure that I have to work with. And, uh, the original plan was I'm gonna drive out to California and put those into my car. And then of course the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. And then from Illinois to California, I have to stay at least three or four nights on highway. And then stay in a way out motel. And then there's often not, not much of a restaurant. And in, in that kind of a situation, driving in my age now, and then in the, under the COVID situation, may be dangerous. And then all my friends in California, Carries and all others say, show the, don't drive. We'll <laughs> ship it to you. So my God, when I receive individual box in the beautiful way they have a pack is another art form. It's a mm. beautifully pack. And then no danger to the artistic piece work in, in the container. So, so they all ship it to me. small tansu, tansu mean drawers, set of drawers. And the tea ceremony, you have a piece of fabric we use to cleaning it out tea equipment, or when you serve bottle of tea, sometimes we put in a beautiful fabric and then present it instead of a tray. And these pieces, so-called kobukusa, is commonly made from many famous uh, artistically well-known fabric through centuries. Mm -hmm. And of course, this day you can buy this original one, um, but they start making replica when you can have a two original and the next two contemporary replica, you cannot tell difference. You know, that fabulous, uh, materials that I have accumulated, mm. so many different types. Mm. And then so one can have exhibition on Japanese uh, fabric, textile art in a sense. And because of such rarity, I don't want to just leave in a paper box, I want to have a nicely installed in the categories. And mm. therefore mm. with that in mind, I ask uh, Kerry as a last request for Japan house box making. I said last, <laughs> that's famous last word, maybe more <laughs> coming up. <laughs> but uh, with that, he is almost finishing up now. When Shozo requested this again, he and I sort of went around uh, sort of exploring how to, how to do this. And um, initially it was sort of designed as one big unit that would have five, you know, decent size, 15, 18 inch um, drawers that would pull out. And, and I kept, I had made some years ago, a series of small tansu um, that had five to six drawers or four drawers. And I don't really have been meaning to get back to that, you know, just to sort of explore it again. And so, I sent a couple of notes back and forth and said, what do you think about instead of doing one big one, we'll do four little ones that will be basically the same volume of space for the, um, and they're, they're fun. It's, it's instead of a, a cabinet that has five drawers, this is four cabinets that have 20 drawers. Mm. So it's, now I'm starting to realize sort of what I got myself into, but it's, uh, <laughs> 
it's I like this I like the manageable size of these little boxes. I mean, I know I've been in Thor. I mean, um, I'd say that one of the best gifts that my friend Shozo uh, offered me in our early getting to know each other was a continuation of sort of how to deal with the, um, the demand of risk when it comes to art, is that you have to be willing to to have a mistake, you have to be willing to to try and, but at the same time to organize yourself into a really focused energy. And learning calligraphy, which is taking a brush, dipping in ink, and then into that open space of paper is somewhat similar to taking a saw or a chisel into a cutting into a piece of wood once you start, you have to keep your focus and accept that that risk can be there. Yeah. Well, my job is to drop little pebble on the quiet surface of water. Oh. That information, little information. And then from there, <clears throat> from the left corner or right corner, they see the difference in how the wave expand. So that way, <clears throat> the local artists, wood, uh, f fine woodworkers, have taken simple idea from my classes and then expanded. And this is the way it should be. And then this is my great pleasure and honor that I had dropped a little pebble in way of thinking. And well, we, we are very fortunate to have both of you um, in our lives and as inspiration for a lot of younger people who uh, hope to either uh, get into woodworking or just become an artist or a contemplative class as, uh, as uh, Sensei has taught for many years. So um, thank you guys so much. If anybody has any more questions for Carrie, they can get a hold of you, Carrie, uh, at your email. Is that the best way to get a hold of you? That would be, yes. Yes, okay, um, thank you. We'll keep everybody posted in terms of these beautiful uh, boxes that are coming out um, and uh, we'll let everybody know how that's going. And uh, once again, thank you both for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you. you. Good to see you. Nice to see you yeah. in a right. very contemporary way.